The studies actually show that people with mild, untreated hearing loss have twice the risk of developing dementia. And if you already have dementia, the hearing loss can make the dementia symptoms worse. So think about that for a second. Just by having mild, untreated hearing loss, we can double the risk. Everyone, to the Dementia Doc Podcast, I am Dr. Miguel Rivera, and I am joined by my wife, Ganga. And today we are going to talk about something that it is so important for our cognitive and mental health, and it is something that is frequently overlooked, and it is hearing loss. Yeah, when we were discussing this, Miguel, I think we, we really came to the conclusion that it's a simple, simple thing to adjust, but the cascade effect that it can have is absolutely enormous. Whether the person is just aging, or maybe they have mild cognitive impairment, or they already have dementia. So if we start first at the stakes, let's say the person doesn't have dementia, they may just have a little bit of a hearing loss. Why is it so important to detect that and how it can affect their cognitive health? Okay, so the short answer for that is that the studies actually show that people with mild, untreated hearing loss have twice the risk of developing dementia. And if you already have dementia, the hearing loss can make the dementia symptoms worse. So think about that for a second. Just by having mild, untreated hearing loss, we can double the risk of developing dementia. And the worse the hearing loss, the worse the risk. So it is something that, uh, there was a study that was published in The Lancet that said that hearing loss is actually one of the top modifiable risk factors for cognitive decline and dementia. Yeah, I think the word modifiable is so important because sometimes when we think of mild cognitive impairment, dementia, I mean, this is a scary disease. And in some cases, like you were mentioning, if a person had a stroke, there's probably nothing we can do other than support the journey. But with hearing loss, you can do something to actually maybe even reverse dementia-like symptoms before it was going to affect the brain. Yes. So, you know, even though there are, let's say, you know, with lifestyle interventions, that some of the risk factors that we consider to be fixed can be actually helped some. But yes, in general, this idea that you can have a hearing exam every year, and if there is a problem that you can wear a hearing aid, or you can, if the hearing loss is more, more severe, you can have a cochlear implant, that actually doing something about the hearing loss can dramatically influence our cognition, if, even if we don't have dementia, um, but also how it affects our cognition, mood, social interactions, et cetera, et cetera, even in the setting of dementia. Yeah, so let's go a little bit in how does hearing loss affect the brain and mental health? Like why, what are maybe the points that we can list out for people? Okay, so maybe three main things. The first one is that hearing loss can uh, affect what is called cognitive load. And this has to do with the fact that when people have hearing loss, a lot of the brain resources go to try to figure out those, let's say, damaged or uh, less than uh, perfect uh, input from the hearing mechanism. And, and because we're allocating all those resources to deal with the faulty hearing, then we're kind of taking those resources away from memory, from thinking, from decision making. So that is the first one, cognitive load. The second and, one has... And maybe I want to interject here. What comes to mind is to imagine if you're at a busy, loud place 
I can remember we once went to a restaurant and there was a very loud music. To maintain a conversation is really hard. And besides hard, it feels draining at some point. So if you're really trying to communicate with the person, it feels draining. The difference is that in the end, we walk out from, from that restaurant. But if the person has hearing loss, there is no way to walk out from that rest restaurant unless they get hearing aid. But that's how they feel constantly, is trying to connect. What did the person say? That is very draining emotionally and cognitively. Yes, and you know, that's a great segue for number two, which is social isolation. So when, when people have hearing problems, that can lead to frustration. It can lead to increased uh, depression and anxiety symptoms. And it can lead to social isolation, which is, as we know, um, a really important um, determinant of cognition. It is something that, you know, proper socialization interactions uh, with others is actually protective. So when people have hearing problems, then they can, you know, because communication is difficult, they don't hear what other people are saying, then that can lead uh, to social isolation, which can in and of itself then have a whole host of, uh, like you mentioned the word, cascading effects uh, stemming from that. Yeah, and again, to point on isolation, you said that if being engaged in social interactions is protective. But also I think the other way to look at it is integral part of our health. I think just recently after the Harvard study that they did for 70 years, what constitutes well-being, that social connections, friendships matter a ton. So even if you're exercising and eating well and you're completely by yourself, it's probably like your health is going to feel the effect of that. So yeah, not being able to hear, follow the conversation and feel that awkwardness is cascading into being withdrawn and isolated, maybe having a depression and all of that affects aging brain. Absolutely. And then, you know, the last one, which I found very interesting, is that this decreased hearing um, can lead to brain atrophy. And that is so, so significant if you really think about it. So because there is lesser auditory input, then the areas of the brain that are used to picking up that information, like the temporal lobes, for example, where we process language both receptive, so we understand what people are telling us, and also expressive, so that we can then communicate with others what our needs or opinions are. So um, interestingly, this temporal lobe is also involved in memory. So when there is less input into the brain, then that area is not being used and it begins to shrivel up. It begins to atrophy, it begins to shrink. And then as a consequence, because memory is also related to the temporal lobe, then we can have then cognitive decline, worsening of cognition, et cetera. So cognitive load, social isolation and withdrawal, and neurophysiological changes in the brain. Which is, in a way, mind-boggling to think that, of course, I'm not saying that hearing loss is a small thing, but again, it's something that in today's world, with today's medical help, can be adjusted. But this one thing can cascade even brain deterioration. That besides sort of like thinking, oh yeah, it's just only mental health, that everything is so interconnected. And when we speak about cognition and cognitive decline, there are so many factors that play into who we are, how we think, how everything works in our body, that I think it's such a big reminder that holistic approach is so important and paying attention to something so in a way small, small that probably people, as you said, don't think about when they think about dementia and really take care of this. Absolutely. And you know, it reminds me of a patient that uh, I got called in because she had become uh, different. She was much more agitated. She was uh, crying. She was not participating in activities. 
Uh, she was lashing out at people. She was resistive to care. So a very big departure from her typical uh, way of being. So when I showed up to the unit, uh, they had already you know, done a urinalysis, make sure she didn't have a UTI. Uh, they had checked basic lab work and they had ruled out you know, electrolyte imbalances, infections, you know, other things that could precipitate this change in status. And um, so when I went to see her, I couldn't communicate with her. And I'm like, hmm, I'm like, hey, you know, let's call her Mary. Hey, Mary, how are you? But I just could not establish any connection. It was clear that she could not hear me. So I looked to see where, whether she was wearing her hearing aids, and she wasn't. So I, I go to the nurse and I'm like, hey, what happened to her hearing aids? And she goes, oh, uh, by mistake, they got uh, caught in the uh, dirty laundry and they were washed. So they, you know, the hearing aids are, are useless at the moment. So it took the family about a week to replace those hearing aids. And once you know it, what, the same day that they got her hearing aids replaced. It was like she changed as if by magic. All of a sudden, she was smiling and happy, not agitated at all, cooperating with personal care. It was one of the first times when I, I, it was evident to me the importance of hearing um, in, in cognition, but also in things like activities of daily living um, with symptoms of depression, anxiety, and agitation. And actually, there are studies that validate this, that say that people with uh, hearing loss have a higher risk of developing behavioral problems and agitation. Yeah, so you pivoted in a beautiful way to paint that a person does have dementia, that sometimes like probably often they can't even tell you like, oh, I don't think I can hear well. Mm -hmm. So, but that would express in agitation, irritability or other behavioral changes that if we don't think, wait, there could be hearing loss, they, they could be medicated, they could be whatever. Again, the cascading effect can be versus to think, wait, let's check hearing. Maybe it's a hearing problem. Yes, uh, uh, so, so overlooked. And, but you know, I, I definitely learned my lesson. And uh, whenever I pick up a new patient, I, I send out a consult um, for speech therapy, for hearing evaluation. Um, and, uh, but it, you know, it's something that I maybe learned because I stumbled into these cases with my patients because it is not necessarily something that was taught to me uh, when I was doing my residency training. Uh, this idea of the dramatic importance of something so easily overlooked as yeah. problems with hearing. Yeah, and I think before we transition to what people can do if they encounter that, mm -hmm. I also want to mention how hard it is for caregivers if that is not recognized. I think to have someone with dementia that you're taking care of, but then on top of that, they have hearing problems that may be undetected. I again, this whole miscommunication, confusion, that you're trying to say something they don't understand, and usually caregivers are pretty burned out to begin with. So again, that cascading effect of everything uh, that just paying attention to hearing can fix. Yes, and so you know, so what are some of the things that, that um, we can do? So I would say maybe the first one is to face the person, to make sure that there is good eye contact, that there's enough lighting uh, in, so that your face is lit up so the person can maybe read your lips uh, more easily. It is important to keep the sentences short and simple as opposed to giving long instructions because you know, we are perhaps assuming that the person is hearing us, but we cannot make that, that uh, assumption. The person may be hearing part of what we are telling them. So to keep the instructions simple, 
clear and short is something that is definitely high yield and important to do. Another thing you just mentioned when you talked about the restaurant, which is uh, eliminate distractions, eliminate extra sounds or, situa or things that can make it more difficult for the person to hear you or to understand. So that's another thing that, uh, that you can do, which is you know, fairly simple. The other one would be to use visual cues. Like, for example, instead of just maybe repeating over and over, here, let's go brush our teeth, you can actually bring the toothbrush and the toothpaste. Or you can show a picture of the activity that you want to do for the person so that there can be some communication that does not necessarily involve uh, hearing because the, the whole point is how do we connect? How can we help our loved one um, to perhaps help themselves? I want to add about the distractions at home, maybe turn off TV mm -hmm. or radio, that I think quite easy to do, but also could be overlooked. Um, just sort of, you know, we talk to each other, TV could be going or some music could be going, but for a person with hearing um, problems, that adds quite a lot of complexity. And the second thing, if you need to repeat, better rephrase, do not repeat the same sentence. Just because I think there is a lot of visual cues that we're picking up and how it comes through could be brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush <laughs> your teeth. And, and that definitely can have a certain, think of an energy that the person can feel that could contribute to the whole irritation and then confrontation that we want to avoid. Yeah, you know, that makes uh, so much sense um, to instead of repeating the same thing to just maybe rephrase it. And it gives you an opportunity also um, to perhaps back off a little bit, you know, if, if there, there is an issue, if you're feeling that you're starting to get a little bit frustrated because I, you're not able to really communicate, you know, that easily with the person. So to take a step back and say, okay, how can I say this in a different way? How can I say this in a more clear, concise uh, manner in an attempt to connect with the person with cognitive decline? Yeah. And I think before we wrap up, there's one point for people who have aging parents. What do you think could be the signs that they may think, wait, maybe I should check my mom's hearing? or my dad's hearing. Maybe I should propose, hey, let's go check your hearing. Like, I don't know, maybe they come and visit and they notice. Like, what would be the first signs that people can pick up? Hmm. Well, you know, I think that perhaps difficulty following instructions okay. uh, can be something, um, like we mentioned, increased frustration uh, social isolation, uh, increased issues with anxiety or depression, uh, cognitive decline. But you know, because it, hearing loss is so prevalent as we get older and so treatable with cochlear implants and hearing aids, I would just recommend get screened. You know, mm -hmm. if you are or, or if your loved one is, let's say, you know, 60 and above, if they're having any degree of cognitive decline, or if there's been a shift or a change in their ability to function, just uh, talk to your primary care doctor. You know, set up an appointment with an audiologist. It is easy to get your hearing checked. It's, it's non-invasive and it can make a, a dramatic difference in not just the development, but also in the progression of cognitive decline. I mean, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but really think about this for a second. Even mild, untreated hearing loss 
doubles the risk of developing dementia. I mean, that is like, wow, when it's something that can be addressed or fixed so easily in most cases. Yeah, I think that's a good point to conclude this conversation for today, uh, because we could only say again, check your hearing, check your hearing, because that can absolutely reverse the cause of something so significant as dementia. Not saying it's the only thing, like there could be other things, but if that's the reason, it's so easy to address today. And if you have any questions, comments, if you think this would be helpful for someone, please forward the podcast and we'll see you next time. Yes. And, you know, if you have your own story about how the uh, problems with hearing, hearing loss affected you or your loved one and what you did about it and what you learned from it, we would love to hear from you. So... We look forward then to our net podcast and thank you so much for joining us.